<clears throat> Mic working? It looks like it. Okay. Uh, fantastic. So, uh, we'll talk about uh, MySQL 8 today. Uh, and uh, because uh, that is a shorter version of my usual presentation, we will just uh, scrap all the stuff uh, uh, which are for developers and only focus on ops. Uh, now, uh, MySQL uh, 8 has been made, uh, making a great strides in uh, getting close to uh, a GA, and it's now <clears throat> a release candidate, but it's still not GA, and things are still being changed, right? So this is kind of based on, uh, well, anyway, just know what things are subject to change. And so you know, uh, to give a credit when a credit is due, I borrowed a lot of uh, very nice pictures from Oracle team blogs, presentations, uh, documentation, and so on. Okay, so what are of, uh, nice things uh, in MySQL 8 for uh, ops people? Well, there are, I think, is a lot of great stuff which are uh, in MySQL 8 in the areas of uh, stability, high availability, performance, security, availability, and, uh, and manageability. The first thing which excites me uh, a lot is a native data dictionary, right? And this is something that is uh, very internal, <clears throat> but also very important, and I would say is about 10 years uh, overdue at this point. Right? What is all about, right? And one folks in operations would care. Now, if you look at the MySQL before MySQL 8, uh, it would store uh, table information in uh, uh, what so-called uh, uh, so FRM files, right? One file uh, per table. And then if you use in a DB table, it would also store a copy of information in a systems, uh, uh, system table space, right? The problem with such setup <coughs> is uh, what this data can be uh, getting out of sync. For example, if you would uh, have MySQL to crash at just the wrong time and you were doing ultra table, you could have this data to be out of sync and you have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, fun manually recovering that. <clears throat> it also would not be quite atomic, right? If you do the uh, single mm, drop table or a name table, right, that would either uh, really succeed or see the fail unless you crash. But if you have some sort of more complicated scenarios, for example, if you have you know, dropping several tables one after another, before MySQL 8, that would not be atomic statement. You could have two of them dropped successfully, then one of them thought to be non-existent, you get an error, right? Boom. Half done statement, that is not really what uh, uh, you would, uh, uh, would expect from other statements, and MySQL 8 fixes that. We also have, uh, through that, much faster information schema, because now it can read from those real data dictionary instead of having to scan uh, a lot of FRM files and also no more my sum system table requires and that is a another reason uh, uh, why and how you can uh, uh, could potentially have um, non-transaction behavior in the future right you would be creating store procedure which goes in my sum tables boom you crash it with the, at exactly that time my sum tables corrupted, what the hell you're going to get there instead of uh, pro stored procedure? Well, no one knows. <clears throat> Information schema. Uh, that is a great, uh, great example here, and we can see uh, uh, the, the, this uh, uh, query with a join on uh, information schema, which uh, used to be pretty much uh, unusable, right? Even with relatively modest amount of tables, it could take uh, a, you know, many uh, minutes, and if you would go to a million table, in this case, it would uh, not complete even in 40 hours, right? Now MySQL 8 is able to handle that quite, uh, quite effect uh, efficiently. And even if you have a million table, well, it would take a little bit of time, but, uh, you know, 78 seconds, that's still, uh, uh, still usable, right, uh, <coughs> with such a large amount of tables. UTF-8, another uh, area where MySQL 8 got a lot of focus. And why that is important, especially right now, right? Because even if you are uh, using uh, uh, some of the Western languages and generally do not or did not need UTF-8 uh, beforehand, then now we have in all the applications, we have what? Emojis, right? 
And emojis require uh, a, a really UTF-8. So if you are having kind of, you know, uh, millennial-friendly applications, uh, then you need to use UTF-8 wherever you actually need uh, support for, uh, uh, you know, uh, languages which don't feel in, uh, in Latin 1. And uh, in MySQL 8, UTF-8 MB4 becomes default, and also a lot of performance work has been, uh, uh, has been done to make MySQL much, much faster than it comes to UTF-8. I would also be talking about the case when MySQL 8 actually becomes slower, but that is typically when you uh, use the Latin Adin character set. Now, a lot of uh, work has been done a lot about security as well in MySQL uh, 8. There is support for roles. Now, uh, we have uh, many different privileges instead of super privilege, right, uh, where you can, uh, for example, give somebody access to uh, Mm, to restart the instance, but not necessary to do some maintenance, some other maintenance stuff. There is a password history, so uh, you can uh, say, hey, don't, uh, we don't allow you to set uh, one of your previous passwords. Uh, authentication, uh, in this case, has become uh, much more secure uh, uh, with, with SHA2 uh, authentication, which actually used many, many rounds of uh, SHA2, uh, right, mm, uh, uh, for uh, password hashes to make the brute force uh, attack much more complicated. But it also c it has a very specially optimized cached version, so it can authenticate uh, uh, the, uh, uh, much uh, uh, very quickly at the same time. Uh, Open SSL is now used both as community and, and enterprise uh, edition, right? So there is uh, novice kind of, you know, uh, confusing differences in behavior and uh, available options. And uh, uh, another thing I like is what uh, now Skip grants uh, block remote connections. In the past, we see many, many users would get into security incident because they need to reset the password, they start MySQL Skip grants, and they forget about that. And what they get? MySQL open to uh, all the internet and now accepting connections with no password, right? Now, that's not going to work. If you're resetting the password, it will be only MySQL accessible locally for uh, until you recover your password and uh, restart it back in a normal way. Encryption is also uh, improved. In MySQL 5.7, there is a great start in the encryption, which does uh, encrypt uh, uh, inactive table spaces, but that would not encrypt things as a... Um, your redo logs and undo logs stored in the system table space. In MySQL, uh, 8 fixes that, so all the information uh, store, uh, all in the database is uh, being encrypted. Another thing, persistent after increment, another thing I would say about uh, uh, the 10 years uh, overdue, right? So now, uh, in this case, you would not have a case where your after increment value can be reset, uh, you know, to something else uh, in some uh, in some scenarios, right? And you would not be uh, have a chance to get that, you know, duplicate IDs, uh, IDs and stuff like that. After manage and do table space, that is another area where I think a lot of folks uh, involved in uh, uh, MySQL uh, operations had a lot of uh, problem uh, through years, right? What would happen before? is uh, uh, if you have some uh, expensive update queries or just a uh, uh, select query which was running for a long time and uh, other queries created a lot of us uh, uh, undo space in InnoDB, you could have uh, that space being sort of, let's say, stuck, uh, stuck forever in the system table space. And the only way kind of to get it back would be to, uh, to recreate your database. In MySQL uh, 8, uh, you have undo table space. Those are stored in a separate table space by default. And uh, then it's also automatically purged. Uh, 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 so if you need it for uh, some space for a period of time, you use it. Then uh, all those workloads completed, uh, it will automatically shift uh, shrink back. Self-tuning uh, for, uh, for InnoDB also I think is very important, especially in, uh, in the cloud, 
Now, if you enable this option in a DB dedicated server, then you may be able to set a MySQL uh, and it will automatically scale if you instance size in the cloud, for example, by setting at least three uh, most important uh, variables uh, appropriately. It is not complete and I think there could be a lot more stuff done uh, with uh, automatic tuning that is a great start. Now, partial ab uh, update of JSON. That is also another uh, very important performance thing if you are uh, storing docs, especially large documents uh, in the MySQL, actually even in something like MongoDB, right? Because if you're just updating one field, maybe there's a counter, maybe that's a little some stamp, stamp you need to update it. You don't want a whole document to be kind of completely rewritten in the database. That is very expensive. MySQL 8 can now just update that uh, field inside the document without fetching that and storing it back, just, you know, we have a very small point update, and also it can handle that efficiently uh, uh, through the replication, where you would also only log the change in a row-based uh, uh, replication for a JSON field, not for a whole uh, <coughs> uh, big row, if you choose so. Invisible indexes. Uh, invisible index, that's uh, another feature I, I uh, you know, filed many, uh, in many years ago. Um, and uh, the problem with the indexes is they're easy to add, but they're hard to drop, because it's hard to be quite sure what that index is really not needed by your application. And if you drop the index which you turned out you actually need, then you often would have queries run so slow it will cause you downtime, and then it may take you many hours to go ahead and, and rebuild that index back, because that's, uh, that's expensive, right? Uh, now, what uh, now you can do with MySQL is instead make that index invisible so it will be still maintained but not used by the optimizer. And if you uh, spot what uh, there are some queries you still have been, which need it, you can make it visible back instantly, right? Uh, and uh, if uh, it's actually not needed, you can drop it in a week or a month or whatever uh, you think is uh, appropriate. Simply table storage engine. Uh, that is uh, actually one of the things how UTF-8 uh, was uh, optimized. It's much more efficient storage engine for internal temporary tables, which are used for many uh, complicated uh, group, by, uh, uh, group by queries. And uh, you know, what it provides is much more efficient storage for this temporary data, especially if you have var car uh, and var binary columns. Now, right now, it doesn't uh, deal with blob and text columns. Uh, those still would require uh, in a DB uh, temporary table, but those uh, are uh, to be fixed, uh, as I understand. Uh, backup locks, that's another uh, neat feature, uh, which uh, allows us to um, uh, prevent uh, uh, inconsistent backups uh, result uh, sometimes. Right, so now uh, the, you can set the, the special lock for backup, which would ensure uh, the backup can be taken uh, to, uh, successfully. And it would only prevent some only rare uh, operations. Uh, uh, your normal traffic uh, would not be uh, blocked by this lock instance for backup. Optimizer histograms. That gives us a detailed statistics on columns, not just indexes, and it really allows uh, uh, optimizer to do much better choices in, in many cases. And what is interesting in this case, I provide as an example, it is this statistics is stored as, uh, as JSON, which makes that much more uh, uh, extensible. And I hope that will uh, allow a MySQL optimizer team to uh, roll in more statistics or uh, different format of those histogram information without needing to Mm, redesign it completely from scratch, right, and wait for many years for a new release. Another fi uh, fix or, or improvement in the optimizer is an improved cost model, which allows, for example, to keep in account how much data is cached versus is not, right, which, uh, which you have to fetch from a disk. Uh, here is a link with some uh, blog post about more information, but uh, in general that uh, can be uh, very important to Mm, uh, get the good uh, execu or bad execution plans for some workloads. 
In MySQL Optimizer, I'm uh, actually some uh, other helpful changes. I don't have a time to cover them all, so here's a link for you, uh, an official MySQL guide. Uh, it has uh, some more information about MySQL Optimizers, uh, MySQL 8 Optimizers specifically, as well as some, uh, some other features. Performance schema is getting uh, uh, much, uh, much faster uh, as well. Uh, and partly that is through uh, uh, having indexes on performance schema. The interesting thing about the indexes on performance schema is what we're actually fake indexes. And uh, internally, information schema just pretends as it has indexes. And, and this is because it's in memory and can scan the data so quickly uh, that uh, provides uh, their you know, much better uh, execution plan and works uh, quite neatly. It also has error instrumentations and response time histograms, both global as well as per query, uh, uh, query digest, and also includes query examples and summary by digest, so you can actually take the query example uh, uh, for some uh, slow query uh, and uh, run explain for you to see why mm, is it slow. Here is example of a performance scheme performance, right? Looking through the built-in sys session table, which was designed as a sort of better show process list, but unfortunately in 5.7 it wasn't usable with large number of sessions. So like 1,000 sessions would take like 30, 40 seconds. That's not as much as you probably would want to wait for a show process list. Now you can see it takes uh, a second or two even if there is a large number of sessions <coughs> available. Remote management features. Uh, I think uh, the speaker before me mentioned uh, uh, and shown action restart command, which I think is fantastic to restart the index. And another one is set persist, which is another very great command, which allows us to set a variable to be uh, persisted when the instant restarts. Because there are so many MySQL users would set the global variable to some value, right, and just not modify my CNF, keep my skill running for a few months, then restart and boom, it became, behaves differently, is much slower or, or whatever else uh, you, you may have changed and uh, nobody really understands why because that change was l uh, long forgotten. With CES persist, you can ensure uh, what those things don't happen. My skill also assumes uh, uh, defaults is uh, SSD uh, right now which is great. Not a lot of things are done for that uh, as of yet, but, uh, uh, but that is good to change in direction at least. MySQL is also prepared for, to be able to uh, ask as a, uh, as a replication master by default. Bin log is enabled, log slave updates enabled, <clears throat> and log expire by default, right? So uh, you don't need to, uh, to do anything, right, uh, uh, to prepare that to be used for configuration. Query cache is, uh, is removed, uh, right? So if you need a query cache, then uh, you uh, probably should be looking at, uh, uh, at, uh, at proxy SQL, uh, right? Or you may have some other uh, caching solution in place uh, already. Native partitioning. So generic partition have, is removed in MySQL 8. It was uh, kind of substantially slower. Uh, than uh, uh, native partition, and that means if you're using storage engines like MySum, which does not uh, have a native partition support, then you would have to either remove partition into that, uh, from that or convert a table to InnoDB before uh, upgrading. Resource groups, that is another uh, cool stuff where you can essentially map some of the queries in your workload to specific CPU cores which can AI help you to, to re reduce the contention, but then uh, B, it also allows you to kind of to jail some of your expensive queries, right? So for example, maybe you have some analytical queries which can be very expensive, and if you uh, let your analytics team to run wild, they'll consume all the server resources. You can set it so they only are able to use no more than, let's say, two or four CPU cores, and uh, uh, that's it. We also get the uh, better performance uh, at scale, right? You can see with MySQL, uh, again, if, if you have a really big RN and really larger num number of uh, concurrently active threads, it can beat the previous uh, MySQL, um, MySQL versions. 
We also like what uh, a lot of stuff we can use in our uh, Percona monitoring management uh, solution in, uh, uh, in MySQL 8, uh, especially much faster uh, and, uh, performance and information schema and more information available in performance schema. Uh, is, uh, is, uh, is great and allows us to build uh, a lot more uh, features out there. Okay, now things which are not so great, I'll call them feature requests. Uh, the single thread performance still sucks and uh, we don't uh, have a, a, a parallel uh, query support uh, as of yet, right? Uh, uh, and hopefully that will uh, uh, get to roadmap sometime, uh, sometime soon. Here is the, the graph, right, uh, uh, from the champion of uh, MySQL single thread performance, Mark Callaghan, uh, right, and actually I cherry picked one with the uh, uh, worst regression, right, uh, guilt charge charge, but you can see what for some cases we have less than half uh, performance of uh, in MySQL 8 uh, as we had uh, in, uh, in MySQL, uh, MySQL 5. Right, so I think that is something we would <clears throat> we would like to see some uh, uh, some reverse, right? And it doesn't have to be this way. There is uh, another database which is called SQLite, which is able to both add the new features in the new releases as well as uh, uh, have um, uh, you know single thread performance being uh, better uh, release uh, after release. And the last thing, if you guys are interested in much more information about MySQL 8 and MySQL and other open source database in general, we welcome you to, uh, to come to Santa Clara in the United States. Uh, we'll have a Percona Live uh, uh, conference out there. Just want to let you know. And that's it, and I think I still have a whole three minutes for questions. Like right, Fred? No questions. Yes. So, <clears throat> you mean information schema? Well, yes, pretty much instead of in ADB internal data dictionary, right, and the FRM files, now we'll have just, you know, one data dictionary. Any other questions? Thoughts? What? Memory engine. What about memory engine? Well, so, <clears throat> Uh, so the question is, is memory engine going to be replaced, right? So now we have this uh, TMP table engine, which is designed uh, for in-memory uh, temporary tables. And those tables have a very specific workload which is needed for, to resolve the queries. Now, wherever that uh, engine is going to be at a future time exposed for general purpose use, uh, I honestly don't know. 